Yes, Carol Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Cherie would like to stand up on Correct? Yes. 
Yes, I did. Did you ever have a phone conversation with Officer Jack? No. Did he ever tell you that you cannot have any contact with your wife? No. Did he ever tell you that you cannot return to your residence? No. Did he ever tell you that you cannot have weapons? No. Is it true that you only learned about that after all of this started coming about after November 14th? Yes. Raising your sons, how did you raise them to treat their mother? With admiration, with loyalty, with care, with protection. I asked both of your sons a question yesterday that, um, that you told me, you said to them, and they confirmed that it's true. Please tell the jury what you told them, that if there was a bus barreling down on you and their wife, would you please tell the jury? Well, I used many analogies. To the, <clears throat> the strongest one was a final one. That if uh, she, they can only save one of us, I would want it to be her. So if, he had, if they had a choice to make between mother and father, your directive to them was to always stand by their mother, even if it hurt you. Is that correct? Yes. When your son said that you went to your residence on October 1st, was that the truth? No. Did you ever remove your guns from the home after you left on July 4th? No. And you were contacted, is it true, by the Pemberton Township Police Department that they, oh, oh let me back up. So Officer uh, Jack, in his testimony, said that he believed it was you he talked to on the phone on September 17th, correct? Yes, he said that. And you heard him testify that the man he talked to said, oh, I'll be in there tomorrow. I'll come Connor, to the police meeting. Well, most of it's been leaving, but it certainly is not a question. Did you hear him say that uh, who he talked to would be there the next day? Yes. Did you go there the next day? No. Did you know he had an expectation that you would be there the next day? No. Do you have any knowledge of this telephone conversation he had with some man? No. So, you found out that there was a restraining order in November? Yeah. How did you find out? My brother told How'd your brother know? Do you know? No, I don't know how my brother knows. Uh, in cooperating with this case, I have not questioned anybody in my family about what they said in order to cooperate. But you found out from your brother that the Pemberton Township Police Department wanted you to contact them? Well, my brother told me that there was a restraining order and the policy of my department is that anytime there's a court document like that, there are procedures that as an officer you have to follow to protect yourself and your career. And that's what I intended to do on no, November 14. So then, knowing about that, did you present yourself to the Pemberton Township Police Department? Yeah, I didn't tell anybody that I was coming down from New York on November 14th, and I went straight to the police station. And do you remember the officer you saw? Yeah, I remember him. I believe I didn't remember his name, but it was uh, Officer Lafon, I think. I, I think the name Lafon came out yesterday. Okay, and so. Did he serve you with the temporary restraining order? Yes. Did he tell you what the terms and conditions of were of that temporary restraining order? We discussed it in detail. Yes, we did. And was one of those uh, requirements that you turn over any weapons you may have if you have weapons? Yes, it was. It was my intention to begin with as well. So then, did you ever re remove your, any of your weapons from your home before November 14th? No. So how long, there was a shift change, right? Yes. And so you had to wait for another officer to, why, okay, why was another officer going to take you to your house? Right, well, the officer who served me, he informed me that he would be, would not be able to escort me, and that if I wanted the escort, I would have to wait. Because you weren't allowed to go to your residence by yourself? Well, he, he said that and I knew that. Okay. 
So you waited around for about how long? I, I counted it to be almost 30 minutes. And were you nervous? No. Were you frightened? No. Were you fearful that your weapons weren't going to be there? No. So you met with uh, Officer Sawyer who testified yesterday? Yeah. Did she ask you about your weapons? Yes. She, uh, she brought it up, but I assumed that she already knew that that's why I was waiting. But when she brought it up, yeah, I uh, told her yeah. And did you tell her about all the weapons that you owned? Yeah. In fact, is it true, and, and she testified that there was an index card that you kept in your wallet, was it with your badge? Yes. Your work card? Behind my badge. And what did it list that? What was listed on that index card? Well, see, the index card seems like a lot of people who uh, don't understand the, the purpose of it. It's an index card that I've carried in my badge for about 20 years now, and I've updated it as I acquired firearms because my department at interval times, they update the weapons that we have. And so in order for me to be able to tell them what weapons I have is serial numbers, it's easy to just have it available and to have to call home and ask someone to help me. So I've always carried that card. If you had gotten rid of your weapons, would you still have that card? If I had sold them, no, yeah. I would have needed them. So, Officer Sawyer went to the residence um, with you, met you there, correct? Yeah, she met me there. She told me that they would, you know, uh, give me, the, the TRO allows for me to go into the house for 15 minutes with their assistance. So she told me to meet them there, and so the buddy who drove me down from New York with a van so I could you know, pack all my stuff, and we, we met there at my house. And who did you see when you got there? Well, on approach, I saw my wife in the driveway. So were you permitted to go in the house? No. Because your wife was there? No. They asked me to stand back. Did you have any communication with your wife? No. Did Officer Sawyer ask you where your guns could be found? No. Did you tell her? Yes. Were you nervous? No. Were you afraid? No. Were you afraid you'd get in trouble? No. Were you, did you know that the guns were missing, they were gone? No. So where would you tell her all the weapons were? I told her where they would be located, which is where I've always kept them. Just where? When I was at home. In uh, the walk-in closet of the master bedroom. It's uh, the walk-in closet, I'll explain has an exterior door that I installed on it. And the, uh, the framing of that closet, I pulled the sheet right down and I put up extra studs to make it almost like a, a, a safe room, the whole closet. And then in the closet, I have keyed safes where I kept the handguns. The long guns I had mounted on the wall with chains. Did anyone other than you have access to those guns? Yes. Who? Oh. My wife. Of course. Did you have a key to the safe? Yes. Were any of those, were any of those weapons hers? Well, no, they were all in my name, but she paid for some of them as like an anniversary present over the years. Did she ever use any of them? Yes, all of them. We heard your son testify, Lord, right? That you went to a shooting range with him and taught him how to use a gun? Well, that was Prince, but no. Oh, Prince, I'm sorry, Prince. The detective. Yes, Prince. Prince, uh, your son, uh, did you go to a shooting range with him? Yeah, every time we had a chance, every time I would be home and we would have time, sure. Did your wife join you? Yeah, she came, not every time, but on occasion, I would want her to so that she can be proficient. Did she know how to use a gun? Yes. Your wife still lived in that residence. Or did your wife still live in that residence from the date you left on July 4th through November 14th of 2018? Yes. Did she ever remove those guns at any time? Yes. Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Stricken. Response is stricken. Right. On November 14th, did you lie to the police about your guns? No. Did you remove your guns from your home? Did your son's lie 
to protect their mother. Unfortunately, yes. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Is there anything else you'd like the jury to know? And that response is true. Is there anything else you'd like the jury to know? Yeah. Um, in regard to the guns, it wasn't like no one could take the guns out the house to go to the range with them. My son, who is a police officer, he was the only one allowed to take them out the house and go to the range when I was not home. I had no problem with that. The only thing that I would, you know, kind of catch them with is if they cleaned them. Because uh, you heard the officer say that what she did see there was a cleaning kit. I mean, I lived with a cleaning kit. Um, I feel bad that my wife, I don't know who, because like I said, I have been unable to ask any questions to go against the investigation that is proceeding. So I really wish that I could tell you, other than speculation, what's going on. Your Honor, I just want to take yeah, that this, that this is, is uh, non-responsive. I don't, no, actually, Your Honor, my bay it is responsive. I asked him if there was anything else you wanted the jury to know. It's a narration at this point in time. It's not, we don't, people just kind of get to expound. There have to be questions and answers. So that's like saying, you know, how do you feel about things and, and you explain that. Your Honor, witnesses aren't permitted to be asked, is there anything else you want? Go for the short